Hello, hello, Fit Body community. This is Sarah with Body Balance here. And today we are going to talk about something that is near and dear to my heart, and that is spaghetti. I'm an Italian girl, so growing up, it was nothing but pasta and bread and carbo load central. So coming into the whole fitness and nutrition arena, I have learned to try to find healthy alternatives to all of those carb-filled meals. So I'm gonna give it just about two minutes here before I dive into the content because I think I hopped on a little bit early, but you know what? The early bird gets the worm, people. So if you are watching on replay, which I know a lot of you will be, go ahead and drop a comment into um, the comments. Hey Trish, how are you? Um, and let me know where you're watching from, what the weather is today where you're at, because here, I'm in Columbus, Ohio, it's typically like 40s or 30s, and today, for some strange reason, it was 75 degrees. So I will take it. Beggars can't be choosers. It was raining, but you know what? I'll take it because it was warm. And I was able to wear this tank top without a hoodie like every other day. What's going on, Trish? How are you? Hey, Kenny, what's going on? John, St. Pete, Frank's in the house. What, what? 89 degrees. Okay, I need to give you guys the dates because I know I keep telling you I'm coming, but I am coming. March 22nd through the 31st, Sarah will be in Florida. So we all have to get together and meet. What's going on, Frank? I saw you power lifting. Every time Frank is power lifting, I'm sitting there watching and I'm like straining myself like watching him powerlifting because I myself I am not strong I may look it but I'm not hey Leela how are you um yeah so it's it's crazy the amount of weight that Frank can pull and snatch and cleans and all that I'm not a powerlifting guru by any means I don't even know the terminology because that's not my forte but apparently it's Frank's because he is doing something amazing okay so and okay, I need to learn how to pronounce your name. Is it Pung? Do you go by, I, spell it out how I can pronounce your name because I want to converse with you and I don't want to butcher it. Okay, so the unicorns, I love those unicorns. Okay, so if you are Italian or, okay, who cares if you're Italian? If you love spaghetti, drop that spaghetti emoji because I searched for it today and you better believe there is a spaghetti emoji. And Fung, what's up Fung? How are you? We are friends now and I can pronounce your name. It was not that difficult. Okay, so spaghetti. That is like something, that is like a little piece of heaven to an Italian girl. I literally could just eat a bit, I could go through a whole box of spaghetti and just put some butter on there and some Parmesan cheese and be happy as a lark. Like every day, I still could if it was healthy enough. Hey Sarah Marie, how are you? Wally, what's going on? Okay, I could definitely just indulge in nothing but spaghetti and be so happy. Well, the problem is, we all know, spaghetti is high carbs. Um, there is some fiber. So in regards to the glycemic index, it's not as bad as white rice or white bread because of the fiber content, the protein content. It is a little bit higher. But look at all those emojis. Get it, girl? Mm-hmm. Scrum So, um, but yeah, it's not the healthy route when we're trying to lower our carbs because if we're trying to burn fat, we're trying to lower the insulin levels, which means keeping our blood sugar level, we cannot always eat spaghetti all day, every day. So, hey Heather, um, Ryan's in the house. So, we need to find healthy alternatives. And in my business, I always try to find the alternatives so we can still get our fix on whatever we're craving, but we can go ahead and enjoy something a little bit healthier and we can still maintain our nice figure that we are trying for. So I'm gonna go through a few different things. I have four different healthy alternatives today for you. And the last one I'm gonna hit on, I'm gonna take you through a recipe that's pretty simple, pretty quick, pretty easy, and inexpensive because that is the key here. Um, first and foremost, marketing tactics are outrageous when it comes to many products, but especially spaghetti. So for here, for instance, I have this brand of spaghetti. 
okay? So whole grain, in all reality, whole grain and the white, regular, not too different. Hey, James, how are you? Thank you for that new picture. Um, I told him, I said, that first picture, I had like a serious head tilt going on, but apparently I have it in this picture too. So I don't know what's going on. Tim, how are you? Welcome everyone, welcome. We're talking a little bit about spaghetti. Okay, Ronzoni. 100% whole grain, healthy harvest. And on here, it says that two ounces, two ounces is a, tip, is a typical serving size for your spaghetti. So 1.5 grams of fat, carbs, 39 grams of carbs, five dietary fiber, nine protein, right? Okay, but Barilla has a protein plus, right? So, okay, I'm thinking if one serving of this regular spaghetti has nine grams of protein, this better be having about double, if not more. Well, we look right here on the front, it says, oh, what do you know here? 17 grams of protein. That's pretty close to double, that's, that's pretty good. Um, not so much. Not so much, people, because you flip it around and you look, they have, and I'm not going to, that's probably a little bit hard to read, but you see the double columns here. We got double columns, which means one serving, two servings. You don't get the 17 grams of protein until you have two servings, which means we take the carbohydrates from 38 to 67. You don't get 17 grams of protein until you are consuming 67 grams of carbs. That is out outrageous outrageous so false advertising false marketing barilla i bought it i bought into it until i really sat down and looked at it and i think this has been in my pantry for probably three years i haven't even touched it neither have i touched this but i keep it in for teaching purposes because lisa mustard in the house horace how you doing buddy um yeah, you gotta, you gotta watch out, people, because serving sizes are very deceiving, or I should say the front column the advertising is deceiving if you do not know proper serving sizes. So those are not my healthy alternatives. That is just to bring awareness to false advertising. Okay, so first alternative, healthy alternative I want to discuss, and I brought it up before, is Banza. There's many different brands, but this is chickpea spaghetti or chickpea pasta. This is the penne. There are shells. There are um, spirals. There, I, they do have the regular spaghetti spaghetti. The problem with that, sometimes it clumps a little bit, but all in all, tastes phenomenal. I honestly feel like it tastes the exact same. Let's be honest, spaghetti does not have an extremely um, delicious taste. It does. It just tastes like a carb, and then whatever you top on it is really what's going to make the meal the meal. So, um, yes, look for those, Lisa, because amazing chickpea. But, um, and so on here, but again, watch that advertising. 25 grams of protein and 13 grams of fiber, right? Okay, well, I flip it around to the side here. Two ounces, we have two columns here. So two ounces is only 14 grams of protein. You go to four ounces, now we got the 25, okay? So a lot of these protein, and it doesn't just go for spaghetti, you guys. It goes for cereals as well because um, Cheerios and some other brands will promote high protein. In all reality, you flip it around, it's gonna say for two servings, and then plus the glass of milk that you use to pour on it will get you to that high protein level. So watch out. Um, exactly. Homemade pasta is amazing, Frank. You are right. And that's the problem. We don't make anything natural. We don't make anything um, homemade. Well, not everyone. So if, you, if we start from scratch, then that's fine, you know, but it's all this processed stuff that we have to look out for. So number one, chickpea spaghetti, I highly, highly recommend. Um, number two, edamame spaghetti. So this is organic edamame and mung bean fettuccine. So there's all different types of your pastas. And um, I'm not an angel hair pasta fan. I to be honest with you, I hate it because I like mine al dente and I feel like it's really hard when you have angel hair pasta um, to have anything al dente, it just turn kind of a mush unless you really cook it for a short period of time. Jeremy, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. Um, yes, John, it's all very, very, very interesting, but I have to say this is 
true. This is speaking the truth. It is not deceiving. It is not false advertising because on the front, it says 22 grams of protein right here. And we flip it around two ounces. We have 22 grams of protein. So amazing. And 11 grams of fiber. So on here, it says 21 grams of carbs, 11 grams of fiber. So remember, we subtract the fiber from the total carbs to get the net effective carbs. Okay. So don't look at the total carbs. You always want to calculate and subtract that fiber to get the impacting carbs that are really the bad carbs that we want to stay away from. Okay. So that's the second go-to. The third is a nice veggie that we can make at home and it's a zucchini. Oh yes. So, um, yes, JB in a house. That's right. Okay. If you guys do not have this utensil or this apparatus, if you will, a zucchini or a veggetti is what it's called. If you do not have this in your kitchen, you need to invest in it. You can order it off of Amazon. You can get it at Kroger or some of your grocery stores. So um, definitely look out for the Vegetti. This is a zucchini and there is a thick and a thin end. I like mine to be the thick end. So you see the serrated, um, you see that right there. There we go. That is all we're gonna do. We're gonna put it right there and I have a bowl right underneath here. So I will show you. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see, but you see how all you do is turn it, turn it. You see it coming out the other end and some people, I'm going to do a couple and then I'll show you the, the bowl here because it's hard to hold the camera and do this. So we'll just turn it. And you know what? I made the mistake the first time I did this and I literally just kept spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning and I had one long piece of zucchini. Like I'm talking this entire zucchini was one strand. And it was a little bit interesting to try to um, eat that with a fork. Because if you're a true Italian person, you do not cut your spaghetti. How many of you, I wanna know. So when you're eating regular spaghetti, do you cut it and just spoon it up? Or do you twirl? Do you twirl? And if you twirl, do you use a spoon with a fork? Or do you just fork it? I really want to know because it's interesting to me. Okay, that's what it looks like. So spaghetti, how amazing is that? But again, like I said, when you're twirling, don't do what I did. Don't keep twirling, twirling, twirling. You want to twirl maybe like five twists of the wrist and then stop and break it off and then just keep going, okay? But this is an amazing twirl, Heather, twirl, twirl, twirl. Um, if you guys watch the Atlanta Housewives, um, who was it? Say the name of the girl because I can't think of it that does the twirl and she blowing in the wind or um, You know what I'm talking about. I know some of you watch the Atlanta Housewives So put the name of the one that always does the twirl Okay back to it. So twist 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 that is option three for the healthy alternatives Frank, that's what I'm talking about get those utensils out the last one, this is the one that we are gonna focus on tonight. I know I've spent a lot of time on the others. It is spaghetti squash. If you guys have never experienced spaghetti squash, I honestly feel like this is the most incredible vegetable out there. And that may be like so extreme to hear, but I really do. I feel like it is amazing. It is very high in vitamins and minerals. It has a good amount of fiber. Now compared to regular, um, spaghetti, it doesn't have as much fiber because it's very water, um, it's full of water. So that it, it's, you get more bang for your buck because you can eat more for less calories. For one cup, there's about 40 calories for one cup. Whereas for one serving of regular spaghetti, there's like 190 calories. So you really want to make sure, uh, or not make sure, but you wanna realize how much more you can eat of the spaghetti squash than regular. And the carbs for one cup of spaghetti squash, there's only 10 carbs. And again, if we have about two grams of fiber for that one cup, you subtract. So really there's eight grams of carbs per cup. You're probably not gonna eat any more than two cups, I'd say, in one sitting. So um, yes, but what you do, you can cook spaghetti squash in so many ways, but I highly suggest baking it. Okay, roasting it, if you will. So you just slice it vertically. So I have two here, and I actually made this in advance because obviously you guys don't have all night to watch me cook. 
but it comes like this, okay? I sliced off the very edge here because there's that little stem and it always makes it a little bit difficult to cut it. But you slice that off. If you really wanna make even more of a rigid slice, you can. And then you stand it upright, take your knife. You, got, you have to have a nice, strong butcher knife and you want to just put your body weight in and slice it down. Open it up, there's some seeds. It kind of looks like pumpkin seeds, if you will. You wanna scrape the innards out. Get all of those seeds out. You can store them, save them, bake them like you would pumpkin seeds if you want. Um, I'm not too keen on that, I don't like that, but I know a lot of people that do. Dispose of it or bake them at a different time, but you are left with just the spaghetti squash. And what I do, I actually use a little bit of coconut oil. A lot of people suggest olive oil. Coconut oil is Chef Sarah G. Shell. You got it, James. Um, I use coconut oil and I sprinkle a little bit of garlic salt and a little bit of black pepper. And then that's what it looks like before I roast it. And then you put it on a baking sheet. Some people use parchment paper. I don't, but you can use this baking tray. I'm real fast, real simple. So I just slap it face down. So you want to have it face down as my spaghetti squash is dropping. Um, so skin up and you wanna bake it on 375. Some people bake it on 400. I do 375. Depending on the size of your spaghetti squash, you're gonna cook it longer, obviously, if it's a larger squash. This one here, um, which you can see in comparison to my hand, it kind of fits right in my hand. I cooked this for 25 minutes on 375 and it is perfection. You don't want it to be too mushy. And if you do like it mushy, then more power to you. But like I said, I like it al dente. So if you haven't had spaghetti squash, it's more of a crunchy taste. It's not identical to spaghetti, no. But I mean, we're trying to find healthy alternatives here that are going to fulfill our cravings, but obviously it's not gonna be spot on. If you want something more spot on to texture and flavor, definitely go with the chickpea pasta or lentil uh, pasta because that is very comparable on all levels, I would say. But this is more of a vegetable, so it's very, very, very light. You can eat more, obviously, because of the water content. Okay, but once you get it out of the oven, let it cool for a little while, and then you are going to, so if you can see it, here we go. You just do this, so the sides, you start scraping, and it just turns into this amazing, spaghetti i mean it's amazing it is truly i mean like the first time i cooked it i'm like this is blowing my mind i can't even believe it how did i not try spaghetti squash sooner i really really don't know so this is what i'm doing and i'm going to show you a very quick quick uh, recipe that you can do and it is vegan um i have used chicken and things like that in the past but um, I know Trish, it's so delicious. I can't even believe people have never even tried it. So you just wanna kind of tear that apart. You can leave a little bit on the sides. That's kind of the fun thing about keeping it in the boat when you make a meal um, and put it into the boat or into the spaghetti squash half. Because as you're eating, you can still, you know, form more and more. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. You just keep on creating more and more food as you eat. It really is amazing. So I'm going to scrape out about three fourths and then like the perimeter here, that's where you're getting all of the spaghetti squash. So you wanna leave a little bit there so that way when you put your sauce and whatever you're putting in there, as you're eating it, again, you can keep scraping the sides, creating more, creating more. So what we're gonna do today, we want a little bit of protein. I look to this and I think, okay, this is great, this is a vegetable, but I need a little bit of protein to and, and more fiber, things like that. So today I am using our mung beans again. Now, I would typically go for lentils with this, to be honest. Um, I've even used tofu, organic tofu, and crumbled it up, but I made a very quick and easy sauce um, again, if, when you're putting sauce or something delicious or a flavoring on top of something, it just takes on the flavor of whatever you're creating on top. So I'm going to show you my very, very quick, easy, uh, you know, if you don't have fresh ingredients and you want to keep things in your pantry for those nights that you don't have a lot of time, you want something quick and fast and cheap and easy, this is what you got to do. Now, if you guys do not have these in your pantry, you need to stash a few cans of fire roasted. That's the key, fire roasted, because 
so much better, so much more tasty than uh, just a regular Hunt's tomatoes. Now, obviously anything canned is going to have a higher sodium content, but you wanna make sure, and if you can get low sodium, that's what you wanna get. And for some reason, I apparently didn't. So um, good thing I don't have blood pressure problems or anything like that. But we're only consuming a little bit of this, so it's fine. But anytime you're getting anything canned, go for the low sodium if you can. So Hunt's sauce, just basic sauce, and then getting the garlic flavored diced um, Hunt's fire roasted tomatoes. I put that together with a little bit of Italian seasoning, a little bit of garlic salt, a little bit of red pepper flakes, and whatever your butter of choice is. You can omit the butter, but I'm a butter fanatic. So Earth Balance Butter, I do like a tablespoon or two of that. If you like this, this is a quick and easy. This is obviously not natural. It, Lord only knows what this is. I know that Trish is probably like cringing right now because it's farthest from non-GMO and organic, but this is the majority of what I consume. And the main, like the last ingredient that you wanna add that everyone loves my sauce. And we're, I do make a homemade sauce and I'll actually put my link um, to a crock pot sauce that I do. And that's more with fresh ingredients. But the key here, um, everyone's like, your sauce is so sweet and spicy. Well, the spice is coming from the red pepper flakes. I usually use fresh garlic. But this is if you're in a pinch, just use a garlic salt, throw all that stuff in there, and then stevia in the raw. So when you buy regular tomato sauce, like pre-made, it's gonna have a high sugar content and they're just using regular sugar. So if you wanna jazz it up and make it a little bit sweeter and still keep it healthy, stevia in the raw. And I usually just use the type that's in um, the powder form. But right now, to be honest with you, I have my phone propped up on top of that canister, so I cannot show you that right now because it is part of the filming process. Just being real with you. So we are going, so I cooked the mung beans, and if you missed that before, Stevia rocks, Lisa, it really does. I don't know why people don't love it like we do because it's amazing. I put it in my coffee in the morning, I put it in everything. So right here, I have the mung beans that cooked earlier and so that's what these suckers look like and i already threw them in the sauce so i'm going to turn this sauce off I, yeah you can still see me okay um i don't know how far this stretch so i had that sauce going and then i start and then i put the mung beans in there so i know it's really hard to see but you can see those mung beans so it's kind of like a meat sauce if you will but a mung bean sauce so you see those mung beans in there See it like that? I know it's not that beautiful to look at people, but neither is meat sauce. I mean, let's keep it real. So what I'm gonna do, I, I put my spaghetti squash half on a plate and I am gonna just scoop out this. And so with the mung beans, remember, if you didn't catch my um, episode before, I think it was like two episodes ago, um, I, told you the health benefits to mung beans because super high protein, super high fiber, and it's plant-based protein. So that's what I go for when I'm looking for healthy alternatives and being vegan, you always look for that, that plant-based form of all that. Okay, so I put it in there, I just slapped it right on in my boat, steaming it all, and now, I will also post a link to a non-vegan recipe that everyone has seemed to really love, and it's the exact same thing, um, spaghetti squash, it's like an Italian style, but it's a lasagna boat. And I am such a ricotta fan, I don't know. Lisa Mustard, are you Italian? Because I thought you had said something about being Italian. Now, anyone out there that loves ricotta cheese, please, put that in the comments because my love for ricotta is like none other. And that is the one thing that I miss so badly, but I have to admit if my mom is making her homemade lasagna, I am going to, Oh, you're not Italian. Well, you know, I mean, ricotta is just something like no other. And so, um, you do love it. I needed to find something to substitute at least the Parmesan cheese because Parmesan ricotta are my loves. So go 
veggie and it kind of clumps up here. So, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, if you are trying to find a non-dairy uh, form of Parmesan, this is not amazing, but I haven't tried others. So this will do the trick. It's vegan, go veggie, Parmesan. Obviously, it's clumping together and the, it's soy-based, but it is non-GMO, so Trish would be very, very happy. Um, and this though is my favorite right now is nutritional yeast. So it does seasoning. So it does have a very, very good taste. Um, so you can sprinkle that right on top and that just makes for, you know, a good fast vegan dish. And it is really, really good. You can just mix it all together, sprinkle that on top if you want. Um, but I will post the recipe to my lasagna boat and that has the full Monty. I'm talking ricotta cheese, mozzarella, Parmesan, everything, and a meat sauce. So, and it's lean meat, but still, if you're going that route and you're just wanting to have a good filling, low carb, delicious Italian meal, then I'm gonna post that link. Um, and hopefully you got some ideas from tonight. Um, but yes, Sarah, you love that nutritional yeast too. It, it really is good and such great benefits health-wise. So one of these posts, I will post all of the benefits to it. Um, but yeah, so those are the two things that I've learned to, you know, that's the thing with eating healthy. You actually learn to love the taste of certain things because you know that it's beneficial for your health and that it's a healthy alternative. So. Yes, so I will probably save this other half and I will probably just do some olive oil and a little bit of the nutritional yeast and maybe a little bit of the tomatoes too. But you know, there's so many things you can do with it. And um, yes, <laughs> um, I'm sorry, it's like hard for me to read and then do all that jazz. But yeah, if you guys have any specific questions about anything that I covered tonight or any other you know, questions or suggestions that I have about alternatives to Italian cooking or anything like that, please message me. I would love to help you. And I'm looking at this meal right now and it is um, begging me to eat it. So I have to go and I will talk to all of you very, very soon, but enjoy the rest of your week and I will talk to you soon.